Hello everyone, welcome back to the LMHR and I nice to say an LMHR review of my favourite locomotive in my collection and by far my favourite class of steam locomotive in well, the world, well, in Britain. My favourite's the Russian 4A4 locomotive. I don't know the class though, but it looks lovely. It's in, usually in green with red star. But speaking of star, let's talk about this star. This is the 9F, let me get my little tool out. This is the 9F from Hornby, which is railroad, and this is engine number 92220, Evening Star. So, yeah, let's talk about the engine. British Railway Class 9F steam locomotive 92220, Evening Star, has a sad history of being the very last steam locomotive to be built in Britain. It is a sad occasion, and the minute it was, it was built, it was preserved. So, you could say Evening Star cheated death. And does it live on? Yes, it does live on. It actually works at, or we'll say work, is on display at the National Railway Museum, NRM. It did run for a few years on, I presume, heritage lines and actually for some passenger trains when its proper use is a freight train. So that's good. And known to go quite fast, even for its classification as a locomotive to pull freight, it went very fast to the point where it was classified sometimes if an express locomotive as a 5MT or standard 5 if you talk uh, specific terms let's talk about the model the model is former Hornby I presume I think it was Hornby Triang because the Hornby Triang 9F was tender driven this is the railroad version which is loco driven <coughs> There's obviously great improvements from the earlier model. So let's talk about the detail of the model. At the front here, this is the buffer beam, which is painted lovely in red. The NAM coupling is separate. I go. I think when I bought this thing, it didn't come with a NAM coupling in the front. And the NAM couplings in the front of the 9F locomotive from the railroad range had a bit of a defect where they were very low down, and that is true. I have to cut the end of the NEM. If I bring it up here, this part here, that had to be cut off because it kept catching on points, especially where the frogs are. The curve will come, then they'll caught it and derail the front trailing track. Ignore my dog barking in the back, sorry. It has got sprung buffers, if I show. Very nice feature. The front here's got a hand railing, and yeah, this is a very old engine in my collection. When I'm reviewing my model locomotives, I'm reviewing them in chronological order of when I got them. Tornado being my first review because it was my first ever engine, which still runs today. Because technically my first ever engine was a 37, but it doesn't run, and the second one, this is my second one, but theoretically speaking, it should be my little pocket rocket, which is this little one here, which doesn't run anymore, it's just a static model that can run up and down, but yeah. Here we go, let's just stick it back on there, go on the side of the track. So yeah, by the age you can see that the handrails do look a bit naffed, but they are quite strong. You can see the numbers 92220, and it's got the smoke box start oh, on the front here. I think that says, if we zoom in, this is why I dropped my phone. That says 50A. I don't know what it stands for, but it's a nice feature to have. Oh. Let's talk about the sides. Here on the smoke deflector, it says the name Evening Star, and it has a builder's plate underneath there. I think it's meant to say like last steam locomotive built in Britain and stuff like that. I can't read that, and I don't think if I were to zoom in on the phone, no, you won't, you won't be able to see that which is annoying. There are lovely red, well oh, actually it looks kind of orange, orange lining. My dog is barking in the back, I do apologize. Which is lovely painted on them. And you've got that little molded details of rivets, rivets molded detailed everywhere. And then we'll come up a little bit more. You can see the plastic copper top on the funnel, which is a twin funnel, two flutes, which is just plastic, not painted, not lateral copper, which is sad. You've got this molded piece of detail here and some orange and black lining right here. And again, handle 
hand railings are a bit naffed. But that's due to the age. If I bring it down again, you can see the pistons here, which we'll talk about the lower running gear later. And you got some more, more detail here. There's some steps here, which are more than lovely. And I think this is the end of the part of the smoke box. Let's carry on working our way down. I'm just going to slide my phone on the tripod just a little bit that way. As we go further along down, oops, squeaking a little bit, you can see more of the red, ba uh, red banding, orange banding. And if I get my phone situated again, we can have a look at the safety valves. There we go. Now the safety valves are a lovely die cast metal, which are they do they do look like they're showing their age. Actually, I think there's a bit of something underneath there. There we go. Get rid of that. Disgusting. This is the steam dome, which is very, very stubby. And of course, if we go down on the running board, the running board is a lovely. Well, if we do go down the weather board, just there we go. The running board's got a lovely uh, black finish on it, but more of that molded detail. And if we move along. To the cab section. Stop squeaking. Stop focusing really good. Do. Yeah, it does look very dusty. It's because the condition that you're going on my brush it doesn't really burn. And again, it is a very old model, and I lost the box for this thing, so it's just stuck on the shelf. I do my I do my best to make sure my engines are nice and clean. Again, multi detail is lovely. A little step here where you go after that. I don't know where the driver would go because more to detail here and more more to detail on the roof here. I think that's the whistle there and a couple of other things. The cab looks lovely. You've got that red lining all the way around. You've got the 9 for 9F and it's got 92220 and a little blue dot on the leaf. You've got more to detail actually below, which is this assembly right here, which goes up. I presume the new 9F that Hornby is making for bad ship prices. No, I'm not, not going to pick one up. I'm happy with this one. I'm not picking that one up. Uh, this is going to be painted or maybe die cast metal. I mean, yeah, okay, that's cool. But um, I'm happy with this one. So let's talk about the lower running gear. Oh, there we go. As we see from this far shot here, we can see the pistons assembly here, which is molded and lovely. And you got the wheel. The guiding wheel, which had had a spring in it, but I lost the spring, so I don't have that anymore. But you can also see all the linkages here are done to a pristine level. And again, this is engine driven now, so everything is driven here. And I think this wheel is what's the actually powered, powered one. And this 9F does not have a flanged middle wheel. And in real life, they didn't have a flanged middle wheel, which I recently found out, which was very, very odd. But explainable. It's difficult to go around corners if you have all flanged wheels. But yeah, if we, if I would like to zoom in to the wheels, you can see the amount of detail that is done on the wheels. The axles are, all of them mainly painted. The This driving wheel, driving one, over here, if I just slide the phone across. This one here is a bit showed off maybe because of the other times it's been in contact with the coupling rod. So yeah, again that's due to old age. And I know it's quite difficult for me to show, but if I bring this up, if I were to get something bright, like my green end of my screwdriver, bring it up, you can actually see this green screwdriver across the side because it's actually hollow in there, which is very cool and very realistic. I think the 9Fs in real life were chain driven. I might be wrong, but I'm just going off what I think. And if I just grab the engine and bring it forward, which I know I shouldn't do, but I'm going to do it anyway. You can see the um, accessory piece here and the smoke box, not smoke box, oh, no, firebox right here, which does link up to the rest of the firebox and the bare view of the cab. There is no cab detail and there's no motive sadly, just all molded in detail, which is still good. So let's talk about the tender. This is the tender of Evening Star, and it's a generic tender. It's okay for what it is. I think back then when they had it, let me just give it a little bit of a 
that's there. <laughs> and just by the brush, you can see how much it moves. It's very, very light. I don't like how light it is. Wheels get misplaced sometimes, and running backwards is a bit dangerous sometimes. So I have they well gained some weight, but I haven't found a way to take off the top part from the chassis of the tender to put some weights in. And I think that's actually impossible. I don't think you can actually do that. So yeah. Excuse me. The riveting detail here is very lovely. If I were to put my finger across it, it does feel legit. The British Rail sign, if I zoom into that. It's done okay. It's alright. Not much chipping, which is good on my part. That's very good. And then again, I do take care of my logos. Promise. <laughs> and by zooming in, you can actually see all the detail. Like the rivets and the beautiful lining. Zoom out again. And you can see down here the molded in detail of the springs and bearings. It would be nice to be painted, but then again, I think it's about me painting it. It's got two domes up here. I don't know what that one is. No idea what that one is. But that one is where the water comes in. And for a railroad model, this has actually got spelmuffers. And another bit of fancy detail I'll show in a second. 